So you have just taken your new processor out the box and are probably wondering how to get everything working. Here are some simple things to look out for to get your screen connected and up and running as quickly as possible. Firstly, there are two options for connecting your processor. Locally, using the display port connected to a monitor with a USB keyboard and mouse attached. This is useful for one or two processors or to investigate further a processor you can't connect to remotely. The second way is with a remote application on a connected computer. This is usually more efficient, especially for larger systems, allowing you to control processors through the management ports. The remote application can be downloaded from our website. This has the advantage of being able to manage multiple processors from a single laptop and update any firmware that may be out of date. This works over a Cat5e or above cable network connected to the processor's management port. To use the application, your computer's network card needs to be in the 192.168.0.xx range, as the default IP address for the processor is 192.168.0.50. If using multiple processors, it's important to have a different IP address for each processor on the network. So for example, 192.168.0.50, 192.168.0.51, 52.53, and so on. You can set the IP address of the processor locally or over IP by connecting to each processor individually before reconnecting to the network. Once you have a valid connection between the remote app and the processor, it will appear here. If the processor's firmware is different to that of the remote application, you can also update it here. The firmware will load off the network, the processor disappears from the list, and then reappears, allowing you to connect. If you are unable to connect to the processor remotely, it may be that the processor is in an IP range which is different to that of the computer. You can either connect a monitor, keyboard and mouse directly to the processor to view the IP address that the processor currently has, or alternatively, if there is no important data on the processor, you can reset to the factory default settings by inserting a paperclip into the reset hole and holding down the reset button for 10 seconds. This will return the processor to the default IP address of 192.168.0.50, but be aware this will also erase any show data located on the processor. Finally, connect the output ports of your processor to your panels. On the SX40, this is done through the XD distribution units over a 10 gigabit connection of either CAT6A up to 60 meters or a single mode fiber connection up to two kilometers. This then feeds the XD units, which in turn feed your panels via the one gigabit Ethercom ports. XDs can be placed locally or near the screen to further decrease the long cable runs. If using S8, S4, T1 or M2 processors, the one gigabit ports are located to the rear of your processor and can be connected directly to the panels. This would be a good point to decide if you are cabling your panels for closed loop redundancy. This will reduce the capacity of your processor. However, it will add resilience if a network port or cable were to fail. Again, this is done from the SX40 by looping trunks A and B and trunks C and D that will run to the XDs as in this diagram. If using other processors, the loop is created directly from the one gigabit ports, as in this diagram. Remember to enable this feature when creating your show file, but don't worry, it can also be enabled by clicking on the network button after the show file has been created. Once you have connected to your processor, it's worth seeing what firmware packs you have installed, as with the addition of new features like HFR Plus and ShutterSync, it's important to ensure your panels are running the latest firmware, as this can unlock additional capabilities of your panels. 
The latest fixture pack is available from the Brompton website in the download section and you can install it by going to the settings menu, fixture library and then click the manage packs button. Finally, click the add button and browse to the file to install. It's important to mention about pack priority here as whichever pack is at the top will take priority. So if you had a fixture that had multiple packs, the one at the top would take priority despite the pack lower down being a higher version number. Before you add any panels onto the canvas, it's good to look in the online view on the processor as this will show you what panels and other devices are connected to the processor output ports. You can see available devices, what firmware they are running and if anything needs updating. It's also possible to see if anything is reporting an error and address that. Now that we've checked everything is okay, let's map the panels to our canvas. Because we know everything is connected correctly, just click on the Add from Network button here. Type the number of the string of panels you wish to add and draw it on your canvas. Once everything has been mapped, press the Enter key to get back to the main menu. Now your panels are mapped, it's worth mentioning that the panel that is selected here is also reflected when you switch back to the online view and vice versa. That's all for this video, which should have got you started with your Brompton processor. If you have any support or training needs, contact us at support at See you in the next video.